I decided to create a little book of my trip to Venice and all the photographs that I took, but I didn't really want or have one image that I felt was really right for the front cover because there's so many aspects of Venice. So um, I don't usually have photographs done of myself, but my wife just took this with her little iPhone and I thought it was pretty cool. So I thought, well, you know what, I'll use that as the jacket cover, but I don't want to obviously just show me and the camera. I want to show some of Venice. So I'm going to use one of these images here as a, a, a double exposure to uh, create the, the, the front cover of the booklet. So the way I'm going to do this is first of all I'm going to make a selection of just me so I'm going to hit Control J to duplicate the layer pick up one of the selection tools in this case we'll use the quick selection tool and then very quickly just wipe across all the areas around me um, that are basically not wanted now you can see because we're using the quick selection tool we've basically um, deselected the top of my head <laughs> which will be a little bit weird but we'll get back to that now in a minute so all I'm going to do is uh, zoom in closer just a little bit more here and uh, basically just use the alt key which is uh, taking it into a minus mode to actually take those parts out in the same way um, I want to bring in um, my face so again once more just pressing the alt key just move this across once more the alt key just to start to bring in some of the hair now it's only going to be rough because it's going to be pretty much a white out anyway and we've got all these burnt out areas uh, near uh, near the hair so it's never going to be a perfect mask even if we tried um, so just by doing that now we've pretty much got the whole image but of course I want to um, <clears throat> I want to just have me and not obviously the background behind so first first of all we're going to do is just select and invert so that's going to basically invert that selection and if I just press Control J you can see it's put that selection on top let's lose everything below okay so I've missed a little bit here so in this case we can just make sure we're on that layer use the quick selection tool again and now all I'm going to do is just hit the delete button and that's basically it's gone so I've got my first image um, let's put a white background behind this anyway for a second just so we can see what it's going to look like so I'm going to hit the create new layer uh, button I'm just going to press the control and the backspace to fill it with white and then drag it down behind me so we're, we're pretty much close there anyway um, let's go and get the um, shot of Venice that I want to kind of create so now what I'm going to do select my move tool drag it on top of the other image now as I drag it it basically um, is going to just drop itself on in the place that we want it to be it's obviously not big enough for a second so uh, we need to make that bigger so let's control T to just free transform that up to begin with just in size and and it pretty much you know I'm, I'm i'm sure somebody out there thinks that's a good shot but i don't and that's not really what i'm trying to achieve what i'm trying to achieve is actually a double exposure so basically i need to turn this layer into the screen mode and then what it's going to do is basically it's going to start to actually show through uh, to my image below so in any ways um, anything that is light and bright it's not going to show up on just actually it's going to show up through all the darks so I can change my opacity of course by dragging that down just by move, moving it to zero of course this shows nothing of it push it up and up and up and it basically has a lot more um, that's pretty good because obviously I don't want it to be perfect as far as the outlines concerned because we know it's such a bad burnt out image on the head and things um, but let's uh, bring a little bit more detail in poss possibly around the top of the head and so we'll just click on to a mask and then B of course for brush D for default and then X to put black on top now remember when a mask is white you see everything of the image when a mask is black you don't see anything and that's why we want to press on the um, alt key sorry the X key just to push the black onto the top here and then because I've um, we've got the brush selected here all I need to do is start to actually paint on to myself to start to actually reveal a little bit more of me and a little bit less of the uh, the scene as such really so obviously we can use the uh, variety as far as the blend modes is concerned to just change it 
can also change the opacity on the top here to paint not so heavy. But we start to get a little bit of a double exposure now. It looks, looks pretty good. Um, what else are we going to do? Okay, I think the jaggedness of the uh, brush that I've just painted on here. Can you see the black marks? I don't like that as much. So let's fix that first of all. That's the great thing about using the mask, of course, is that I can um, just by pressing X again, put white on top, and it's going to start to reveal it more. Right. Um, so I, I think we should do a little bit of colorization, a little bit of effect on it anyway. I don't really want a black and white image, and I definitely don't want my just my skin my skin tone. The first things first, let's uh, see if there's different areas of the canal. Um, so I want to move it around. Now, if I just basically left the link here while I moved the background image around, um, basically you can see it's really not kind of uh, help, helping me because the mask is being moved with the image itself. So let's just control Z that for a minute to put it back where it was and link the mask. Now I can start to move the, oh, if I select the image instead of the mask, I should say, I can start to move the image around and it still kept the mask in there. So if I decide that I want actually a little bit more of the uh, canal across here, uh, a little bit more of the, uh, the boat and things really, we can start to actually move that around without any trouble. So the First things first, when we start to bring other parts of the image in, you might want to hit the mask again, BDX, put black on top, and just start to actually paint in just that little bit more as we're going through it. All right, so that gives you a pretty good idea on a quick double exposure, uh, but let's add a little bit of a colorized effect to it. So with that done now, all I'm going to do is go on to the adjustment layers, clicking gradient, I'm just going to go in and choose, say, one of the purples. And then all we're going to do then is start to uh, change the opacity. So we start to actually kind of get a, a different kind of look and feel. So the good news about that is what it's going to do, it's uh, at least adding some color to the top of the image for the book cover instead, this stark white and things. Once more, though, if I felt that I didn't want it across the whole of me. Uh, there's several ways to do it. Obviously, I could just click onto the cutout of me, control click it, which makes the selection. Then within the uh, gradient tool at the top here, I can decide on uh, just um, if it says the background layer. So in other words, or all, all I did there was press the Alt key and that basically removes me from the select, uh, selection. If I just do Control D on that for a minute, we can see it. If I decide to invert it, just Control I. So basically I've got the colorize effect going over me more, we can see the effect. So that was just invert, inverting the mask. Obviously, if I wanted to bring in a different part of the image as the background, perhaps a little bit more kind of surreal, I can just, just go ahead now um, and Let's get the background again. So let's say use the same image again. We'll drag it in. I could have I could have duplicate the layer, of course. Let's make it bigger again. Control T. Remember in Photoshop, you don't need to hold the Shift key anymore to keep the proportional scale scale in. So I like all these kind of buildings over here. A bit of the edge of the um, uh, canal boats as well with it. So let's just flip this. Let's go into Edit transform and basically flip horizontal and then we've got all the buildings over the top so once more let's stick this into the screen mode so we know we want perhaps the mask uh, on here so let's duplicate the mask by clicking the alt and I drag it above so that just puts the mask around me as well and then if I unchecker the link between the image and the mask again, basically, and we select the image, control T again to transform it. This is where we can start to actually just make it a little bit bigger to actually fill in the frame and so on. So we began pretty much with um, a, a, a basic snapshot image and we've tried to create it into a bit of a book, a book cover. And, and so what we've just done there, of course, is we've, we started with the one photograph, which was this. 
and we made it into a bit of a difference as far as the book cover was concerned. So, hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on how to actually do double exposure.